Hey, it's Mark, but also get the land geek with their favorite niche real estate website, www.thelandgeek.com. And today's guest is going to help us with the thing that we all want help with making more sales. But before we talk to our guests, I'd be remiss if I didn't properly introduce my co host, the brain, the professor, you know him, you love him, Scott Todd, scotttodd.net landmodo.com. If you're not automating your Craigslist and your Facebook postings, postingdomination.com forward slash the land geek. And of course, learn more at investor ninjas.com. Scott Todd, how are you? Mark, I'm great. How are you? You know what? My pulse is still normal. My respiration is fine. And, and I can track it now. And I'm really going to try to convince you to get the Apple watch because I know my heart rate and you don't. Well, I know that my heart rate is still pumping because I'm still here. So what's a number, Mark? What's a number? Seriously. Like, is this something that you're now obsessing over? Like, oh my gosh, what is it now? You know what I'm, you know what I'm really obsessing over though? Making more sales. I know who's going to help us make more sales. John Livesey from johnlivesey.com. You don't know John? He is known as the pitch whisperer. Shh. He's a sales keynote speaker and shares the lessons learned from his award-winning sales career at Condé Nast. In his keynote, Better Selling Through Storytelling, he shows companies, sales teams, how to become irresistible so they are magnetic to their ideal clients. After John speaks, the sales team becomes revenue rock stars who know how to form an emotional connection and a compelling sales story with clients. His TEDx talk, be the lifeguard of your own life has over 1 million views. His best-selling book is Better Selling Through Storytelling. And he's also the host of the Successful Pitch podcast, which is a big deal for in over 60 countries. John's a big deal. He's been on Larry King. And uh, John, let us say welcome. Thanks, Mark. Thanks, Scott. Great to be with you both. John, let's rewind the tape and let's go to Condé Nast. Mm -hmm. What's going on over there? Why, what, what happened where you became like the pitch whisperer? Well, I was there for about 15 years and my job was to take the brands, which you probably know some of them, GQ, Wired, Vanity Fair, Arc Digest, and explain to brands like Lexus Cars why they should run their ads on those brands print websites and then eventually some video platforms and that really was um, the genesis of learning how to tell good stories because each brand had a different story and of course each model of the car had a different target audience to reach so it was that variety of pitches and stories that trying to find that fit like a puzzle and uh, that really is where I crafted my selling and storytelling skills and then in the last five years I've been giving keynote talks specifically to audiences that have to win bake-offs, shootouts, uh, beauty contests, interviews, whatever you want to call it. You know, when it gets down to those final two or three, an ad agency has to do this to win new clients. I had to do it during media day when a big account like Lexus would bring in all the reps to pitch. And I know that whoever tells the best story in those one-hour bake-offs, uh, shootouts, whatever you want to call them, is the one that's going to get the yes and not the one that tells a bunch of boring information. Very interesting. And would this model of storytelling work with any size company or is it basically Fortune 500 companies? No, it works with anybody. I mean, if you, uh, whoever tells the best story to get hired, if you're in the real estate business, I just gave a keynote talk to the Redfin company, you know, that uh, uses technology and a uh, different way of compensating their agents to get people to do it. And real estate agents have to do this all the time to get a listing. You know, typically the seller of a home will say, okay, I'm going to see three agents. Everybody come in, do your dog and pony. Show me what you're going to do to sell my house, how much you think it's worth. What, you know, and that's, your, that's the same exact situation, Mark. So again, if that real estate agent who's pitching someone to give them the listing can tell a better story of someone else they helped who had a house or condo very similar to theirs, what they did that separates them from the competitors, whether it's social media or cool party, uh, not just another open house, then people say, ah, I see myself in that story and I want to go on that journey with you. And therefore storytelling allows 
people to not have to push. The old way of selling is, you know, hire me, hire me, buy, 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 uh, give me the listing, whatever it is. Um, and the new way is storytelling. So instead of pushing, you're pulling people in because stories are magnetic and then you become magnetic and you can let go of this persona of being a pushy salesperson. I, I love it. Scott, Scott, Scott. I, look, I'm a big believer. I mean, I stories, stories are meaningful, but Mark goes in and tells a story and I go in and tell a story because we, we both listen to you. <laughs> we both listen to you. We're going to go in and we're going to pitch our story. Yes. How do I beat Mark? Like, what's the secret sauce? Like, I mean, we can all go in and tell stories, but there's got to be something different to the story yes. that's going to close the deal because how, I mean, like they might just like Mark's story better than mine. Is that what it is? It's just, or, or what's the recipe to get me and my story over Mark's? I mean, Scott, no offense. You lack warmth compared to <laughs> Maybe, so, I mean, just, maybe, maybe no, but I, I do tell, I think I tell better stories, Mark. Got it. No, no, the, you, the, you do, but it's like, Look, do you want to go to the horror film and hear that story? Or do you want to go to my rom com and walk out feeling? That's hilarious. I love the rivalry. Let's just see what the expert says. Well, there's okay. a lot. Well, first of all, Scott, um, my mission is to help as many people start telling stories. So, you know, when in these um, situations where it's between you and two other people or two other firms. 90% of people are not telling stories. So just the fact that you're telling stories sets you apart. Now, it is definitely my goal on this interview to give your listeners the secrets to telling a good story, and then we can get into the nuance of what's gonna make the story better. And ironically, what Mark was teasing you about is a big factor. So there's three unspoken questions that everybody has when they hear you pitch anything. The first one is, do I trust you? It's a gut thing. In fact, the handshake came about to show you didn't have a weapon in your hand. And then it moves to the heart. Do I like you? And that's what Mark was teasing you about. The, emp the more empathy you show, the more likable you are. And then it moves to the head where people are listening to you tell that story and they're thinking to themselves, do I will this work for me? That's, that's worked for those other people, but can I see you doing the same thing for me? Now here's the secret, Scott and Mark. You are not the hero of your story the client is. I want you to think of yourselves as uh, Yoda in Star Wars or the Sherpa helping people climb up Mount Everest. And when you tell a story with that context, then people are gonna see themselves in the story and wanna have you as their Sherpa or Yoda. And so we can get into what makes a good story and I can give an example, but I just wanted to let that land first to make sure that answered your question. Okay. No, that, that totally. Yeah, we, we totally understand that. So let's let's get into the the nitty gritty of breaking down the elements of what makes a powerful, compelling story where the listener or the client um, or whomever you're trying to persuade is mm -hmm. the hero of that story. Yes. I think it's important first to say that there's three things you have to do when you're telling a story to sell, you have to sell yourself first, then you sell the company, even if it's just a one person company, and then you sell the product or service. Most people forget their first two and jump right into the features and information of the product or service. So selling yourself is telling your story of origin. So when I was working with an architecture firm, when they were up against some other architects and then they would get to the team slide, I said, all right, what are you going to say here? And they're like, oh, my name's Bob. I've been here 10 years. This is what I do. I go, okay, that's not memorable. There's no story there. And I started asking them questions. And it turns, turned from that to, you know, when I was 11 years old, I played with Legos. And that's what inspired me to become an architect. Now I have a son that's 11. I still play with Legos with him. I bring that same passion I've always had to this project. Okay, great. What do you do, Sue? Uh, well, before working here, I was in the Israeli army. And I bring that same discipline and focus I learned there to make sure that if you pick us, we're going to make this sure this comes on time and under budget from the discipline and focus I learned in the Israeli army. So there's how I turn team stories into memorable hooks that people go, oh, I get who they are. I want to work with those people. I, 
I, I love it. More, John, more. <laughs> so um, turning a case study into a story. Usually, uh, again, back to the architect example, they would show before and after pictures of here's what it looked like before we came in and redesigned the airport or the law firm, and here's what it looks like after. So those pictures are great, but other people have pictures of before and after. So where's the story? So a story has four elements. The exposition, who, what, where, when, paint the picture, the problem you're solving, the solution, and the secret sauce, the resolution. So Scott, if Mark doesn't do the resolution and you do, you're gonna beat him. So, exposition. With Gensler, I said, all right, you're the top architecture firm, let's hear this story. And they said, all right, two years ago, we helped JetBlue at JFK renovate this whole terminal. The challenge was, we had to rip up all the floors in the middle of the night and get it done so that the retail stores could open on time. We knew of all the potential things that could go wrong because we've been doing this a long time. So we had all our vendors on call. Sure enough, at two in the morning, a fuse blew, but we had somebody there in 20 minutes, fixed it, and at 8.59 in the morning, the last tile went down and all the stores opened at 9 a.m. on time. Not one penny was lost. And a year later, their sales are up 15% because that renovation has caused people to spend more time shopping. Exposition, we painted the picture, told them where it was. The problem, we turned it into a story. There's a little bit of drama and conflict there. And then the solution was it got done at 8.59. You see the suspense? And in, then the, expo the resolution, a year later, revenue's up 15%. So if you just tell, the, you know, if you don't tell what life is like after you fix the problem, or if you just got up there and said, we're somebody who uses critical thinking to anticipate problems, that's not really as memorable as a story where you show it instead of tell it. Okay, so John, can we get really, really down to details? Mm -hmm. So like our niche. Yes, please. Buying and selling raw, undeveloped land. Yes. So the hero for us is going to be our buyer mm -hmm. that wants this asset that yep. essentially lasts forever. Mm -hmm. There's no restrictions. You can do whatever you want on it. Yep and potentially can go up in value. Mm -hmm. You have generational wealth. You're going to build your net worth. So mm -hmm. there's all these benefits to it. Yep. But how can I, and not, Scott, you can drop off now. How can I <laughs> create a story yeah. where I'm leading that person, you know, as the hero of that story down mm -hmm. the path of land ownership with the resolution being You've got this generational asset that is only limited by your imagination, or it could be, you know, um, right. something else that I'm, I'm just not even thinking about. Yes. Um, let me ask you a couple of questions so we can hone in a little details. What made you get interested in raw, undeveloped land? Uh, for me, it was uh, I wanted to quit my dead end job as an investment banker, and this was a way out. Uh huh. So, okay. Got it. So to build wealth. Yeah, uh, got it. I, okay. Yeah, yeah. All right. Got it. So this again, this is rough, obviously, but it's probably a little more the right direction than what you might be doing now. So this would be um, something you could say in an elevator pitch, possibly, right? A cocktail party is like, hey, what do you do? I don't, you're a land geek. What does that even mean? Or you have this, I've listened to you and Scott, but I really don't get what you do. And you said, you know, picture this five years ago. I was sitting at my desk as an investment banker and I'd gone to school to do this and I was completely burnt out. The hours, the stress, I just couldn't take it anymore. And I kept thinking, there's got to be something better than this where I could have some freedom. And I remembered the movie Gone with the Wind when Scarlett O'Hare's dad said to her, land, Scarlett, they're not making any more of it. Get land. And I also always, always use that quote with a slight Southern accent. Um, and so I thought to myself, wow, if I became a person that could help other people who wanted to invest in something that has such huge potential, I mean, think of it, it's undeveloped, it's raw, you can paint your own picture. And buyers say, you know, I don't really think the malls are the future. I wanna do something else. This is the place to do it. And so I found people who are just like you, who have money to invest and wanna build it and I know exactly where they wanna go with it, and they wanna build their net worth today. 
because as you know, they said it's not, they're not making any more of it. And the thing that I love most about helping people increase their net worth while creating something great is that they're building a legacy for this generation and ones to follow. Because let's face it, the money you buy in a car, there's no legacy there. Wouldn't it be great if long after you're gone, that your future generations are grateful to you for buying this raw undeveloped land and turning it into something that's made an impact on the world? That's how I tell that story. I, I love it. Now, would that be just as powerful in copy as it would face-to-face? -face yes. Over the phone? Yeah. Emails, websites, all that. Your story of origin. You know, you, most websites have an about page and telling that story is really uh, where you put that. Scott Todd, what do you think? I think it's pretty good. Now, I, I have a question, John. Mm -hmm. All right. Like, when... When I get up there and I tell the story like that about me, like nobody cares, like people really don't care about me or they care about their own dang problems, right? Mm -hmm. Like like you were talking about like, uh, I played with Legos when I was 11. If I heard that, I'd be like, so what? You played with Legos when you were 11. What's that gonna do for me today? And I know you kind of answer it with the same, oh, I bring the same enthusiasm, whatever. Yeah. But like, to me, that doesn't like what Mark's story there. It's, it's a great little fluff piece, but like, man, like I'm missing it. Right. Like he's got to go back and show the resolution. I think. Got it. Right? Like, can I just jump in here and you can see Scott lacks warmth. <laughs> because if I heard that same story, I could connect immediately as someone who has a son that loves Legos, mm -hmm. I loved Legos as a kid. It creates that immediate bond. So yes. there's this new thing out there, Scott, called rapport. <laughs> yes. Right. It's I called the Scott, what? Rapport. It's called rapport. Oh, no. Come on, man. I think, I think, <laughs> sorry, Scott, so let me, let me, re, let me reflect back what I heard you say, uh, which is what's known as active listening, which is a great way to build rapport as well, which is something that a lot of people are not skilled at doing. And you have not accepted the premise that you have to sell yourself first before you sell your company or your product because you are someone who has a mindset of let's just get to it. However, I promise you, you buy emotionally and then back it up with logic. If you go buy a sports car, Lamborghini, Ferrari, whatever it is, they don't say this gets this many miles to gallon. They're going to say, Scott, imagine how sexy you're going to look in this, how like, fun it's going to be to drive this car. They tap into the emotions. That's what storytelling does. And if you're trying to become memorable and people hire, you know, in the case of Gensler, they were told it's between you and two other firms. You all have the skills to design this airport. We're going to hire the people we like the most because we got to work with you for five years. If you don't tell a story about who you are, how are they possibly going to get to trust, like, and know you? Mm -hmm. So that's what's in it for them to listen to that story and what you're going to say that in fact makes you Memorable. So let me ask you the same question, Scott. What in the world made you get into raw, undeveloped land and want to work with Mark? It was all about me, honestly. Like, it was about, like, my job was coming to an end. I had to get out of the rat race. And so, like, I listened to this guy called the Land Geek. I followed everything he said, and I replaced my income in, like, a blink of an eye, right? Just by following what he said and not thinking for myself. So it was yeah. all pure greed on my part. Got it. But you have been on a little bit of a hero's journey from hating what you did. You have like, the hero's journey. That is right. I do right. have a good story there. Yes. So if other people can see themselves going on that same hero's journey and want the freedom you have, the resolution of your story would be, what is my life like now that I don't have to worry about paying bills? Yes. And it's much better than Marx's. <laughs> uh, and John, he's not exaggerating. This guy is a, he's the Marine of life. He's a pilot, so mm -hmm. he flies. He has, he's, owns a boat, he's in Tampa. So he's on the water and then on land, he actually is just building not only his own net worth through passive income, but he's, he's giving back and he's like the Sherpa helping other people get to where they want to be. Yes. So he's like that land, sea, uh, yes. Air. Air dude. Right. Marine. Yes. He's yep. like a, so I don't even know how to picture it, but. Right. I think um, 
This concept, yeah, I also picked up some hesitation on your part, Scott, that you don't care about anybody else's story, so why would anybody care about mine? Would that be accurate? No, no, that's not accurate. The, the, the reason I'm saying this is, look, there's a guy out there, there's a guy um, who wrote a book, Story Brand, right? Like, you know, Donald Miller. I'm, I don't know if you've read his know, stuff or not. I know of him, yes, okay. yes. And, you know, the, the one thing that kind of, um, I, I, I'm going to say, the one thing that rubbed me in an interesting way was that the premise that I just took with you was, was basically his premise too. It's like, mm -hmm. you go to someone's website and it, it's like, Hey, this is who I am. And it's about, it's about me. And I see this, I see this happen uh, on other land investors, people that we we're trying to help as well. They, they create a website like, Hey, look at me. I'm uh, you know, this is who I am. This we're, we're, we're brothers or whatever. And honestly, like someone's going to your website, that's a nice little story piece behind, but they're going there to solve a problem. And yes. you might be able to, to solve their problem, but to lead with that, to me, is, is not the right step, right? Like it's, okay. here, let's help first you identify the problem. Yes. That's what you talked about. Okay, let's so help identify your problem. So let's, let, let me clarify what then, Mark's question was to me. He said, is the concept of storytelling something that can be used in a website and on copy. Right, right, no, that's my right, answer, I'm with you. My answer to that was yes, in the about section of your website, it is that's not it. a headline. Yeah, you if you go to right. Donald Miller's website, you will clearly see, I went there myself just now, there's an about page. So for, I guess, but the message of what he does is the middle, the same thing for my website. Whoever tells the best right. story gets the sale. I don't talk about my story of origin, but it's there for people who want to know it mm -hmm. once they know that I can solve their problem. Right, and that, and, that make, and that makes sense. So, because before we're gonna, you know, transfer any kind of value to somebody, we want that extra assurance about that person's credentials, right? So I go to your website, John, it's like, okay, here's- Can, I, can I trust you? Do I like you? And will this work for me? Those three things right. that everybody who's successful answers somewhere either in person or on their website. It's just a matter of Scott's priority and I agree with you Scott you definitely need to say here's who I help and here's what problem I solve and guess what here's what life is like for them after I've solved their problems in the case of uh, executive search firms that I gave a keynote talk to in Vegas at the Four Seasons they were saying you know we can't control what order we present in we asked to go last hoping that'll make us memorable but you telling us if we tell a better story not just of who we are but of other firms we've helped and, uh, and placed and what their life is like after hiring us, that story makes us memorable even if we go first. So now they're winning more new clients from using storytelling as a sales tool, not a branding tool, a sales tool. That's my unique niche. Yeah. You know, Mark, that's the thing is like, you know, when, when you think about what John's saying and you think about how you can apply that, one of the things that we don't do often enough is we talk about the land but then we don't talk about like our customer's success on that land journey in the resolution of it. Like, I mean, like the, the, the guy that you have on your website, you know, the, 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 I forgot his name, but he gave you the testimonial video, right? Yes, uh, the guy. Right, yeah. Um, what's his name again? That doesn't matter. Whatever. Yes. We all know. Yeah. Yeah. So essentially like you have the testimonial video on your website, which is cool. However, that's not the resolution to it, right? Like he's just talking about what a great honest person you are, but there is a great story behind that video that led to this, that you could then take and incorporate like, Hey, listen, let me tell you how I've helped people on their land buying journey. We did this. And then like, take this guy, for example, this guy, he now owns his property, even though, even though he almost lost what he did because of a health issue or an economic downturn or he lost his job. Here's what he has to say. So it's almost like you could take that piece and incorporate your testimonial videos into the, to the customer journey to the resolution piece. And I think that gets missed a lot of time. And John kind of picked up on that. Yes. If you have a testimonial Mark, that's just talking about how likable you are and how the guy trusts you, you've got two out of the three, but you don't have people in their head going, well, will that work for me? Like, okay, Mark's a nice guy and he's trustworthy. That's important. But I'm in, still in my head going, do I want to opt in for an email or learn more? What's the next step? I, I don't know that I, it would work for me. 
And then if your right, testimonials then, can yeah. talk about that, then, and then what life is like after it's working for me, then I'm really, you're future pacing people. Yeah, I and mean, that's why I'm gonna buy your book <laughs> and, and drill down to do all this and at the same time make sure that Scott never gets a copy <laughs> and just doesn't get the whole concept so that my sales quadruple while he remains flat. So John, I want to know like what is the 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 thing in your in your sales expertise like what's the one thing that people do wrong the most? That you would say I think the thing that people do wrong the most is they think if I give you enough information you're gonna say yes I can can I can inundate you with information you just don't have enough information to say yes when in fact people buy emotionally and backed it up with logic and you have to tell a story of why they should care and show them someone else who's been through the exact same situation and use empathy. You know, Maslow said, if the only tool in your toolbox is a hammer, you tend to go around looking for a lot of nails to hit. Well, if Scott's only got the one tool of, you know, buy from me, information, don't tell any stories, bam, 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 um, and That's they'll throw a bunch of, bunch of stuff on the wall and hope it sticks, you know, good luck, God bless, it doesn't work anymore. The new way is tell a story, become magnetic, and the biggest mistake I see people making is not telling compelling, concise, and clear stories of how it helps people and why they would want to be on that journey. I love it. Scott Todd? I'm still going to beat you in, the, in our sales pitch. I got it. <laughs> okay, now what do you have, Scott? Because I want to know. I, I promise I won't use it. <laughs> I, I, I already told you, like, you got to listen to me. The resolution right. mark. The, the resolution. The, the, okay, so the resolution is before they didn't have this raw land, they had X, Y, and Z in their lives. After we were able to make this the, the simplest, easiest, most trans transparent real estate transaction that they've ever had. And not only that, we didn't wreck their credit because we didn't do a credit check, right? We're old, old school land sellers. Your word is your bond they were able to get an asset that they never thought they would be able to own. And now that they, that they own it, life is like this. They can go and unplug. They can go out the raw land. There's no cell towers. They can be closer with their family, their friends. They're impressing their banker with their net worth on their balance sheet, having this asset. And they go to sleep every night knowing that God forbid they don't wake up the next day. They have something of a legacy to pass on to their children. John Livesey, is that a good resolution? That's a great resolution. What you're really selling there is peace of mind. Before you were anxious and worried, and now after doing this process, which we've walked you through, you know, it might seem overwhelming to try and figure this out by yourself. What if I buy the wrong piece of land? You know, but you have all the step-by-step -step proven processes to buy the right piece and make sure that the solution is seamless without even impacting your credit. And now you, um, have peace of mind. That's really what your the resolution and something that's building and leaving a legacy. You're tapping into all the mind psychological reasons why people pull the trigger on something. Yeah, you know it'd be great, John, if there was like a book that gave you a roadmap how to do this. <laughs> if only. If yes. Only. Yeah. So okay. that that was the yeah. goal. Yeah. I mean, you know, you people, you're on this journey. I'll be really curious to see what Scott Todd thinks of this, of going from invisible to irresistible. And I talk about that a lot in Better Selling through storytelling. Each rung of the ladder, where do clients see you? Like if I've never heard of you guys or the land geek, then you're invisible to me. But I've heard of you, but I don't think I ever want to own land or couldn't, then it's insignificant. Then you say something to me like, oh, maybe I don't need a gazillion dollars to buy some land. Then it's interesting, still not ready to do it. Then you really intrigue me with, you start describing someone who's just like me age-wise, income wise, frustration wise. Uh, and I'm intrigued to learn more. And then I opt in for your free PDF or whatever it is your next part of the funnel is. And then I actually buy land and give you a testimonial. Then I, you're irresistible to me. I become your brand ambassador. So that's really the, the roadmap to success is using that, those rungs of the ladder. I love it. And after the podcast, John, I do have 40 acres that we 
can discuss. I'm, I'm hearing the theme song to Gone with the Wind in the back of my mind. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I think your, your mentorship, this podcast has been really phenomenal. And, and thank you for putting up with our shenanigans. It's, and it, and it I love all, shenanigans. I love the word shenanigans, let alone the actual shenanigans. Yeah, it's, it makes it fun. Um, but I would like to ask you for one more piece of value, a website, mm -hmm. a resource, a book, mm -hmm. something else actionable where the art of passive income listeners can go improve their businesses, improve their lives. Yes. All right, Scott Todd, this is for you and all the other people listening. Take out your phone, text the word pitch, spelled with a P, keep it clean, to this number, 66866, and I'm gonna send you a free sneak peek of better selling through storytelling. So text the word pitch to this number, 66866, and boom, you'll get the sneak peek that gives you all the secrets of how to go from invisible to irresistible and become better storytellers instantly. I just did it, and I'm getting my, my email right now. Boom. Boom. Um, and I think I beat Scott, so that's good. You faster thumbs? Way faster. Mm -hmm. Yeah, his, you know, he doesn't like when I talk about his, his slow thumbs, but yeah. <laughs> it's okay, Mark. It's okay. Don't worry about it. Okay. I, 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 know, I, know you're little, I know you're sensitive about it. So. None of us it's okay. else. It's okay. It's all right. Yeah. It's okay. Yeah. Um, I, I might not be able to share my it, tip of the true. week with you. I'll say it for John. <laughs> Here we go. John. And John. So, yeah, for John only, not you, Mark. So check out uh, inyo.me. I n y o dot m e. Inyo dot me. And basically, what this is is uh, basically this is a way to help automate tasks that you just don't like for, and it's really geared towards like, you know, um, freelancers, if you will. But essentially to me, I can see like getting my VAs to use this stuff to help them become automated better and working through. So for example, you can teach them how to automate some reminders or how to, you know, get files that they might need and bring them all in together into a nice fancy platform. So essentially it, it's got automation built into it. Some pretty cool stuff uh, that goes along with it. So, you know, upload and track documents and just everything that a, that a kind of a freelancer might need in order to kind of help automate some of their work without having to have me do it. So I'm sharing this stuff with my uh, VAs. So maybe you should too, if it works for you. Yeah, but why not use Zapier? How is this different? Well, this is, this is like a, think of like a platform that will help them kind of do your work better. Zapier will help automate other things, but this is uh, like another backend component. And the thing is that when you're automating through Zapier, that's really something that it's really to help you automate more than just your VAs. But this is stuff that, that they need to do and stay on top of. Uh, so like basically helping you helping them to automate their work with a pretty cool platform. Oh, cool. I, I hate when Scott has a good tip of the week, <laughs> but that is a good one. Um, well, my tip of the week is learn more about John Livesey and better selling through storytelling. If you go to johnlivesey.com, um, you can learn a ton more there. And just if you break down John's website, you'll see how he practices what he preaches. And it's really interesting how he does that. So even just as his own case study, go to johnlivesey.com. And I know nobody can spell it, so I'll have a link to it and, um, and do that. So, John, are we good? We're great. Thanks, Mark and Scott. It was a lot of fun. Thank you. Scott, Pat, are we good? We're good, Mark. All right. Well, I want to thank the listeners and just remind you that the only way, the only way we're going to get the quality of guests like a John Livesey is if you do us three little favors, you got to subscribe, you got to rate, you got to review the podcast. Send us a screenshot of that review to support at thelandgeek.com. We're going to send you for free the $97 Passive Income Launch Kit course. So please do that. Also, this podcast is sponsored by Flight School. Have Scott Todd be your Sherpa. Climb that mountain. Start earning passive income in real time with somebody working the business with you. 
that is what flight school is all about. Learn more, go to thelandgeek.com forward slash training. And uh, Scott, we ready to do this? We are ready, Mark. Let freedom, freedom ring. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, John.